Dick Morris is a best-selling author. He's a longtime political strategist who has served clients all the way from Bill Clinton to me. That's right. He worked in my early campaigns way back in the 90s. But he went on to counsel Donald Trump on his 2016 and 2020 campaigns, playing a key role in President Trump's surprise 2016 win. Dick says in a brand new book, Trump is going to be back in 2024. He says he's running and he knows the strategy to win again. Which welcome to the show, author of The Return, Trump's big 2024 comeback, my friend Dick Morris. Dick, good to have Great. you here. Good to be here. Good to be here. Now, Mike, uh, The Return was not my original title. What was it going to be? In the first draft, it was The Second Coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured that might be presumptuous. Yeah, somebody might have taken that wrong, you yeah, think? Right. <laughs> what made you th first believe Donald Trump had potential to be elected president? Because the media no. just laughed him off from the beginning. I have known Trump my entire life. My father was his lawyer. Ah. And uh, whenever I would have dinner at Mar-a-Lago, Trump would come over to the table and say, your dad was the best real estate lawyer I ever had. <laughs> and then because he's Trump, before he left, he said, he wasn't like you. He wasn't <laughs> political. <laughs> I can and, see uh, all of that conversation going and, on. Well, I'll tell you, when I, I got cancer in 19, in 2016, 17, right after the election. And um, I watched this from my bed. It was tongue cancer, which for a political pundit is equivalent to capital mm. punishment. <laughs> <laughs> but they did, the surgeons did a great job. And uh, I watched Trump do everything that Bill Clinton promised. Huh. And when I met with Trump and I said, I've written two State of the Unions for Clinton. And it's the same speech you gave. Just his is in the future tense, yours was in the past tense. Hmm. He would say, I'm going to improve the schools. You did. He said, I'm going to seal the border. He actually built a bit of a border wall. Yeah. Trump said, I'll finish it. Uh, and everything that Clinton tried to do, equalize incomes, raise incomes of the working class, you did. Uh, but I decided to go to work for Trump after I, I recovered from radiation from my cancer because I, I was frankly near death at two points. And uh, I decided that God had spared me for a purpose. And that purpose was to try to get Donald Trump reelected. Well, it didn't happen in 2020, but you believe that it will happen in 2024? Oh, he hasn't do. even announced yet. So. I do. Well, he hasn't announced yet. It's between him and his accountant as to how the rally expenses. And if he announced before the midterm elections, it would be kind of bad form to preempt that too. Well, it might be. But, um, well, Trump preempts them by just existing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe that uh, Trump wanted me to write this book because he wanted me to put out and been very generous in endorsing it because he wanted me to write about how he'll win in 24 and how it'll be different from 20. So tell and, us how it will, because there are a lot of people, even people that voted for Trump twice, 16 and 20, loved what he did, but they're worried that if he runs, the press will make it all about his personality, not about his policies, and it's going to just be a mess again. So how does he well, avoid that? The big thing that bedeviled him was the voter fraud and the way the 2020 election turned out. And I believe that we have hit on a formula to end it and I explain it in the book, I do not think there will be any fraud in 24. Hmm. Because the Supreme Court is about to rule in a case called Moore versus Harper. And it's a challenge to a reapportionment by the Republican Party of North Carolina. And the Republicans, the Supreme Court threw out the congressional map, the, leg the legislature passed and imposed one that helps the Democrats. And the Republicans are arguing that the Constitution if you keep a copy on you, go get it out now and look at it. <laughs> Article 3, Section 4 says the times, places, and manner of choosing congressmen and senators shall be determined by the state legislatures 
not the states, not the governors, not the courts, not the secretaries of state, the legislatures. And it's called the Legislative Supremacy Clause. And the strict constructionists, who are now a majority of the court, say that's what the Constitution says. So there are now five states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, that are swing states in which the legislature is Republican and the governor is a Democrat. Hmm. And the legislature passed laws just like those enforced now in Arizona and Florida and Georgia, which really prohibit voter fraud. They, they ban drop boxes, they require photo ID, all kinds of stuff. But the governors have vetoed it in those five states. This court case, if we win it, which I think we will, because four judges have sided with us to hear the case, mm -hmm takes it completely out of the hands of the governors. And the legislature alone makes that determination. And it was absolutely brilliant to bring in the state. It is a fascinating insight, because I don't know of anyone else who's talking about that. No. Nope. Uh, this is the book. It's called The Return. Dick Morris, who is the author uh, of a lot of best-selling books, but this is his latest, and it may be his greatest. Now, for our audience, you can pick up a copy of The Return anywhere books are sold. It's in stores. It's online right now. And be sure to head over to Huckabee.tv because that's where we make it easy. We have links on all the things, not only about the book, but all of the ways in which you can connect with Dick Morris and his regular columns and the commentaries that he makes on Newsmax and other places. Check out other books as well on those links.